Welcome back to the Sioux Falls Arena, getting ready for the fifth place game between Sioux Valley and Lennox. Now, last night up in Aberdeen, or actually yesterday afternoon up in Aberdeen, they were playing the consolation bracket, and it was Campbell County taking on Arlington in a consolation game, and we have highlights from the Barnett Center in Aberdeen. Well, today, um, obviously, the, our opponent didn't shoot the ball near as well as, as yesterday's opponent. Uh, first half yesterday, they were shooting 55%. Um, today, we played Arlington, and they were cold to start. They were shot 18%, I believe, in the, in the first half, 0 for 11 from, uh, from the perimeter. So that was very big for us. And, and uh, you know, defensively, that was our goal, is to hopefully keep them on the outside and, and hope, hope that they didn't shoot the ball too well. You know, Kyle Weisbeck did a heck of a job down there defensively. Uh, they like to penetrate a lot, of course, well, to get the guards going in there and getting a couple of shot, shots blocked. Um, they're going to think twice next time. And, and uh, that was a... That was a huge role by him, stepping in and taking over that. And then also uh, him on offense, too, helping us bring the ball. Before. Anytime you can come to the state tournament and win two games, um, I think that's pretty big for your team, especially going out on a win. That's that's very important for our seniors and, and of course, for the underclassmen, but more for seniors and their, and their career in a win. And there you see the final score in that game. Campbell County advances to the fifth place game at the B. They're playing Scotland right now. 2.20 in the first period left to go. It's Scotland on top of Campbell County. The fifth place game, 15 to 10, is the score in that contest. And don't forget all the scores and updates and individual and team stats online at sdpb.org. And there's Buddy, the SDPB kid. He's been here at the A tournament all weekend, meeting the fans and having a great time. This young bird encourages South Dakota kids of all ages to exercise, eat healthy, and of course, watch quality television. You may get the chance to meet Buddy this summer as he'll be traveling around the state to attend a number of events. And you can check out his schedule at sdpb.org or you can watch your local newspaper for more information. And Buddy hanging out with the fans. There's some young fans from Lennox, I believe, getting their picture taken with Buddy. He's the most popular guy at the whole tournament. Absolutely. And don't forget, you can also find out more about Buddy's healthy habits. Go online, check it out at sdpb.org. Dot org and parents it is a web page your kids can go and find out a lot of information about buddy and all the things he has uh, on the web page and of course the uh, schedules for radio television uh, educational and online services all there at sdpb.org now a lot of talk around basketball this season has been about white rivers louis krogman he became the all-time leading scorer but who is the man he passed? Well, our friends at KSFY have done uh, a little feature about Don Jacobson. Said they'd get something back to me. Don yeah, Jacobson is 68 years old back. now. He scored the last of his 2,825 points in 1957, the year he graduated from Lake Norton High School. But he didn't know he had the record until he was in college, where he starred at South Dakota State. A lot of people don't realize that uh, when I was playing, I didn't realize there was any record to be had. I think it was more important to other people than it was to me. Krogman has had the benefit of a three-point line, which they didn't have in the old days, but Jacobson says they played more games in a season back then, so it evens out. Our junior and senior year, we played, I think it was like 65 or 70 ball games. And now I understand they can only, max they can get in with a state tournament is 25. So that's a big difference. Jacobson has never met Louie. He was invited to Rapid City to see his record broken, but some health issues will prevent him from making the long trip, which he says is just as well. I don't think that would be fair to, to, to Louie to, to have me there. I think it's it's his his day to, to enjoy and, and uh, you bring some old guy out there, 68 years uh, old, uh, I think it takes away from what he's achieved. Don Jacobson thanks our friends at KSFY for getting the interview with there with the former record holder, of course, Louis Krogman for White River going for the championship tonight. 
at the B tournament against Langford. And there, of course, Buddy meeting some more of the fans here. And, you know, he's here to remind us that March is exercise month. Each month, SDPB's mascot, Buddy, helps kids grow up happier and healthier through Buddy's Healthy Habits. You can go online to learn more at sdpb.org. We're at the Class A Boys Basketball Tournament. This is South Dakota Public Broadcasting. The 2008 South Dakota High School Boys Class A Basketball Tournament is brought to you in part by your membership in the Friends of South Dakota Public Broadcasting, by Wellmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Dakota, and by Dakota Bank. Welcome back to the Sioux Falls Arena, and there's Buddy, the SDPB kid. He's been here at the tournament all weekend. He's been meeting the fans, having a great time. And this young bird encourages South Dakota kids of all ages to exercise, eat healthy, and, of course, watch quality television. You may get the chance to meet Buddy this summer as he will be traveling all around the state to attend a number of events. And you can check his schedule at sdpb.org or watch your local paper for information about Buddy's healthy habits. And uh, there's Amanda with Buddy. Yeah, and, and Buddy's giving some high fives to the fans there as Buddy always, like I said, one of the most, probably the most popular person in the building here at the State A Tournament in Sioux Falls. Got an update quickly from the uh, AA Tournament. We're about halfway through the third period of the seventh place game. Pierre leads Sturgis 35 to 21. And it was Scotland out in front of Campbell County at last check 12 to 8 at the... Uh, B tournament that's going on up in uh, Aberdeen at the moment and that is the fifth place game and don't forget you can get all the scores and stats and uh, the brackets updated at sdpb.org and coming up tonight here on South Dakota Public Broadcasting our coverage begins at 530 Central 430 Mountain Time we'll get you ready for that third place game between Red Cloud and Sisseton and then it's the championship between Platt Geddes and Madison, and there you see our coverage tonight. Get started a little earlier tonight on championship night, 5.30 Central, 4.30 Mountain. And another update quickly at halftime at the uh, B tournament, it's Scotland out in front of Campbell County, 26 to 18. That is the fifth place game at the B. Well, it should be a great evening tonight, but before we get to that, we've got the consolation round championship. And this is going to be an excellent matchup. See some stellar players in both lineups today. And we'll talk all about it when we come back. You're watching State Boys Class A basketball action on SDPB television. The 2008 South Dakota High School Boys Class A basketball tournament is brought to you in part by your membership in the Friends of South Dakota Public Broadcasting, by Midcontinent Communications, and by Sanford Health. And welcome back to the Sioux Falls Arena as you see the fans getting ready for this fifth place game between the, the Sioux Valley Cossacks and the Lennox Orioles. And here's a look at your Sioux Valley starting lineup. And it's brought to you by Dakota Bank. They'll have Gunderson and Noli on the back line. Tucker Lundy the start at center. Ben Miller at forward. 23 points and 12 rebounds per game. And Nate Sudengay. And starts at the other forward. The starting lineups for the Cossacks brought to you by Dakota Bank. And also here, the lineup for the Lennox Orioles. Brandon Klinger, Austin Iacker at guards, Jordan Conda at center, Jared Vlaston and Andy Cruzy are the forwards. Your starting lineup for the Lennox Orioles brought to you by Dakota Bank. Boy, some real luminaries in both of those lineups. Mm -hmm. We'll be watching uh, certainly for Jared Vlaston, the, the Drake recruit who is lighting up this tournament with his dunks and his uh, all around great play. He is the complete package and on the other side you've got uh, Ben Miller for Sioux Valley and let's hear those starting lineups. Let's turn it over to our public address announcer. Once again good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the consolation championship game for this 2008 version of the South Dakota boys class A high school basketball tournament. 
The South Dakota High School Activities Association, along with its corporate partners, Sanford Health, First Premier Bank, Premier Bank Card, Farmers Union Insurance, and Ramcota Hotels, remind everyone that one way of teaching proper respect is through good sportsmanship. Please let your good sportsmanship show during this game and throughout the rest of the day's games in this tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, for this consolation championship game, the visiting team on the scoreboard will be the Lennox Orioles. And the home team on the scoreboard, the Sioux Valley Cossacks. Let's meet the cheerleaders for the Lennox Orioles. Nicole By, Alyssa Estenson, Jenna Geiken, Brittany Krell, Crystal Staten, and Cassie Swanson. And the cheer coach for the Orioles is Robin Luther. And now let's meet the cheerleaders for the Sioux Valley Cossacks. Kylie Dahl, Julia Farber, Kristen Intermill, Chelsea McEwen, Sarah Meyer, and Adrian Waldner. And the cheer coach for Sioux Valley is Casey King. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet your starting lineups for this Consolation Championship game. Starting at a forward for Lennox, a 6'5 senior, number 15, Jared Vlaschen. At a guard for Sioux Valley, a six-foot senior, number 30, Corey Gunderson. At a guard for Lennox, a senior at 6'2", number 33, Brandon Klinger. Starting at center for Sioux Valley, a 6'2", senior, number 20, Tucker Lundy. Starting at forward for the Orioles, a 6'4", senior, number 14, Andy Cruz. At a guard for the Cossacks, a 6'3", junior, number 22, Brooks Noli. At a guard for Lennox, a 6'1", junior, number 25, Austin Iocker. At forward for the Cossacks, a 6'5", junior, number 12, Ben Miller. At center for Lennox, a 6'5", junior, number 23, Jordan Conda. At forward for Sioux Valley, a six-foot junior, number 34, Nate Sudengay. The assistant coaches for Lennox are Darren Elwine, Darren Ike, and Riley Kerwin. The assistant coaches for Sioux Valley are Randy Santama and Robert Dreesen. And the head coach of the Lennox Orioles, Mr. Jeff Larson. The head coach of the Sioux Valley Cossacks, Bill Vincent. Our officials for this afternoon's cha Consolation Championship game, Mr. Sherm Cutler, Mr. Harry Hainan, and Mr. Todd Palmer. And there you have the starting lineups for this fifth place game at the state class a boys basketball tournament along with steve to i'm paul guggenheimer great to have you with us on south dakota public broadcasting this afternoon for what should be a great matchup sioux valley wins the tip ben miller taking it away from jared Vlaschen. you have sioux valley in the white uniforms with the blue and gold trim and lennox in the orange uniforms with the black trim lennox starts off man to man and let's see who they've got guarding Smith. They're going to put Brandon Klinger guarding him initially. Ben Miller bouncing the ball. He's averaged a double-double all season long and in this tournament, dishing it off to Brooks Noli. As they work it around the perimeter, they're going to take their time setting up. Both of these teams can play the up-tempo game, but right now, Sioux Valley is just going to ease their way into this. Boy, they're keeping the ball way outside, and now it fell down, but he got back up. Good job of keeping his composure by Nate Sudengay. Now he's tied up by Jordan Conda, and they call the jump ball. The possession arrow goes Lennox's way. 
And so the Orioles will inbound. Halftime score from the B tournament. I thought it was halftime earlier. That was actually a quarter score, but now it is halftime at the B. Scotland on top of Campbell County for fifth place, 41-31. And taking the three-point shot is Austin Iacker, and he sinks it. Nothing but net, and Lennox leads three to zip. Iacker had 23 points yesterday, had the hot hand, and that went over Tri-Valley. And again, the Cossacks slowing it down. Miller almost with his heels on the midcourt stripe. Well, you talk about bringing the defense out. Sioux Valley's doing that. They're keeping the ball way outside. Let's see if they try to find somebody cutting across the paint. They're trying to set up Miller. There he's the top of the key, but too far out for a shot. Yeah, normally, well, Miller can shoot from outside quite well, but normally he, his game is down low if he can get down in the paint, but he's not doing that now. Noli thinks about a three-pointer, starts to dribble, loses it. Now looking for Miller underneath. It's batted away. Now, yeah, but the Cossacks are able to save it, so they'll have to reset. They were trying to catch Miller again, coming across the paint down in the low blocks, guarded by Klinger, who's a shorter player, but Klinger, a good athlete. He has the speed to keep up with Miller, and that's what, you know, makes him so tough to guard. you got to have a guy with height and some jumping ability and the good footwork and the speed to keep up with a guy like Miller. Exactly, and, and he is going to be a chore for Lennox, and they know it. But the thing for Lennox is that, fortunately, they have a deep bench and a lot of tall guys who do move well. So, you know, they, they're a Lennox, a team of interchangeable parts as the ball's oh, moving. Losing a handle on it was... The Sioux Valley player, Nate Sutengay. And it was Conda who tied him up again. That's the second time Conda has done that in this game. Except that this time the Cossacks get possession. We'll put it in play right in front of our broadcast location. And now Sutengay will bring it back across center court. Here's Noli, and he... And he's going to be fouled, fouled by number 25. That's Iacker. And uh, first, team first team foul for Sioux Valley, so they will in, or for uh, Lennox, so they will inbound the ball. Sioux Valley will. Miller looking for Noli underneath. And Noli's going to have to step up and maybe do some posting up inside. He does have the physical strength to get some guy down on the blocks and maybe muscle his way to the basket. Miller on the dribble. Spins and Ooh. it's rejected by Glaston. Big man on big man. And here comes Iacker back the other way. He'll slow it down. The trailer, Cruzy, and kicks it out for the three-pointer by number 33. That's Brandon Klinger. And it is a six to nothing Lennox lead on two three-pointers. Well, time of possession in this game favoring Sioux Valley, but uh, Lennox has struck quickly when they have been on offense, and we have a foul call. And that will be on Cruzy. The second team foul for Lennox, and the first for Cruzy. And we will take a break with a timeout on the floor. You're watching State Boys Class A Basketball on South Dakota Public Broadcasting. And we're back at the Sioux Falls Arena as Sioux Valley gets set to inbound the ball down by six. Here's Miller. Oh, tries to get it to Sudengay. Boy, Lennox is just challenging every pass, and Sioux Valley was lucky they retained possession. Almost another deflection or another ball batted away. Miller, though, comes up with it. When you play against Lennox, you have to be on top of every aspect of your game. You have to have the communications. Your passes have to be on target. Your screens have to be done right because Lennox is so fundamentally sound. This is a three-pointer by Gunderson. It's good. And it's been all three-pointers so far with Lennox leading by three. Cossacks are going to need other players to step Iacker up. Iacker for three. Won't go. Rebound Noli. And that's rebound. What, yeah, that's what Noli's going to have to do today. Get those strong rebounds. 
because you know Lennox crash can crash the boards and they've got a lot of height all over the court at every position and Lennox also brings a lot of height off the bench. Noli turnaround jumper good. That's a two pointer. Nice form. Nice shot by Brooks Noli his first points of the game. Oh, and Luke. knocked to the floor is Sudengay. And I think they're going to catch Vlaston, and they do with his first personal foul. Well, that's one guy you don't want to see get in any foul trouble if you're Lennox. And uh, no doubt about that one, as Sudengate fell hard to the floor. Boy, that, that one made a boom that was heard all over the arena. Here's Miller across the line being double teamed, sort of. Now a three-pointer from the baseline won't go for Gunderson. And the rebound for Lennox as they come back the other way. That was and a shot that won't go. Now Iacker short baseline jumper misses everything. Miller keeps it or I think it was Miller who batted it back in and Vlashin sends it out to Cruzy who makes the three pointer. Well, it's been a long distance shooting contest and we're Miller gonna knocked down ball in half court and who's that going to be on is it I oh, yes yes his second foul and he's, he's one of the key starters for Lennox yeah he's going to have to watch himself and now uh, coming into the game for Lennox is Joel Brewer as uh, I comes out of there he's in foul trouble with two here in the first. Now Noli. We're going to have Harms guard Miller. Austin Harms into the game for Lennox. Oh, underneath. Tudengay takes a nice feed from Brooks Noli and converts, and he gets fouled, and it's a three point play. Watch the ball moving around the perimeter. The pass right on target, and Tudengay uses his body to shield the ball from the defender. He uses the window, and that's what Sioux Valley's going to have to do. Chris passing and get some of those other guys involved in the offense. You just can't rely on Miller and Noli to carry you against a team like Lennox. It's a two Two point lead and a chance to cut it to one. Sudengay does not get the roll. Rebound by Vlaschen. And Lennox will come back the other way. And it looks like the Cossacks are going to play a uh, kind of a diamond and one with one guy that's going to be Sudengay chasing Vlaschen all over the court. All nine of their points have been on three pointers and another three point attempt that time by Cruzy misses everything. Maybe now they'll. Mm -hmm try to be a little more conventional it's almost you wonder if that's by design you wouldn't think so but well they're going for <laughs> Jeff Larson's a veteran coach and he'll throw a lot of different looks at you and he'll devise ways to beat you you know if you want if you know and he has a lot of capable players on the team that can fire the three pointers but you kind of wonder if maybe that's kind of loosening up the Cossack defense so that they can get flashed and some of those other big guys loose along the baseline. Well, that's their bread and butter is is, is working it into those guys down low. And there's a nice pass to Miller spins in the lane and it won't go. But Miller gets the rebound and does he keep it alive? He does, but it's deflected to the hands of Joel Brewer and they send it up court. Here's Cruzy. And he'll. Think about taking a shot here. Nice They're working around another three point attempt and this won't go Miller with the follow up and it's or Brewer rather with the follow up Brewer <laughs> makes the first two pointer for Lennox shortest player on the court gets a, the bucket right in front of the basket but a nice timing on the leap by Brewer and the nice soft touch for the putback four point lead for Lennox time running out here in the first quarter it has really flown by this first period of play. Well, they're uh, hanging on to the basketball. Sioux Valley is and just winding the clock down. But they're only they're only down by four and they've got the basketball for the last shot. You figure Sioux Valley will hold it for the final opportunity. Ben Miller trying to figure out what to do here with time running out. Miller spinning in the lane driving scoop shot. No he traveled mm -hmm. took that extra step as Flashing was coming over with the help defense and Miller has been frustrated in this quarter somewhat. Yeah he hasn't scored yet as they have 
the Lennox defense has really bottled him up. And when you, you know you talk about a guy that's been scoring in double figures the whole tournament, that's quite a feat. As Cruz, Cruzy with a three-pointer, oh, it's a, just a two-pointer at the buzzer, got the roll, and it is now a 13 to seven Lennox lead as we end the first period of play. You're watching Class A Boys Basketball on South Dakota Public Broadcasting. Back at the Sioux Falls Arena, Lennox with a six-point lead as we start the second quarter. The Lennox fans up on their feet, happy about that. And uh, Lennox brings it down to start the second quarter. And again, Cruzy into Vlaschen underneath. Nice pass by Vlaschen, getting it into Conda, who converts. And that's the thing, if you worry too much about Vlaschen, he is a good passer and spots the open man Conda for the easy bucket. Boy, it almost looks like the old school weave here offense, you know, way out on top. Boy, look at they are all over Miller and they're they're putting their hands on him. Cruzy and then uh, Klinger, Klinger putting the putting the hands with the jersey, trying to get him take really trying to take him out of his game, and they succeeded in the first quarter, holding him scoreless. How long can that last? Miller trying to get position, well, and he comes back now to take the ball and draws the foul. It's Klinger. Mm -hmm. Final score from the double A tournament. Pierre defeats Sturgis 60 to 43 for seventh place. Lennox has 16 fouls here in the first half. Miller trying to get it into Nolly. It's knocked away. Noli rather, but it is a knocked out of bounds by Lennox. So Sioux Valley will have the ball. Brooks Noli trying to get position underneath. Miller trying to work it into him. And Lennox looking for it all the way. Now the inbounds pass, almost thrown away. Corey Gunderson dribbles in, shoots, and it won't go. And flashed in the big man, 6'5", senior with the rebound. Lennox very methodical on offense. They will take their time. Bruzy, this is a two-point shot, won't go. And getting the rebound is Iacker, and he follows up with the basket. And Lennox has a 10-point lead. Sioux Valley needs to score on this possession. They have really been hounded on defense, and they are being pressured all over the court. Sudan Gay out to the left wing. Now back up top, just looking for an opening. And look at the defense swarm, especially when Miller gets the ball. With Lennox very aggressive defensively. They're pressuring everywhere. They're challenging every pass. Noli. I mean, it's tough for Sioux Valley. I mean, now they get the ball into the paint. Underneath to Noli, and he can't get it to go in. Follows up, though, and scores. Nice rebound and a follow-up basket by Noli. And Sioux Valley really needed that one. Absolutely. Good job by Noli to follow the shot. Cruzy for three from the baseline. It won't go. And a big rebound taken there by Corey Gunderson. Now Noli ahead to Miller. Nice pass. And Miller hooping the hard. Nice pass to set him up. And he got it along the baseline. And Lennox commits the foul. What the pass. Laser into Miller. And he draws the foul and still manages to fight his way through it and make the basket. And now a chance for a three-point play and what would be five unanswered points for Sioux Valley trying to fight their way back, and they're doing just that. Klinger, his second personal foul for Lennox. Miller makes it a three-point play. It is a five-point lead for Lennox. And that was here, a beautiful setup by Noli. He is playing his best game today so far, by far. Played awful strong yesterday, and we're going to need a, a big effort from Noli. Vlaschen kicks it back out, and a three-pointer is good for Klinger. And that's what makes Lennox so tough. They can they, they pass the ball. Their spacing is so good. They find the openings to get to, and then they've got, like I said, the versatility in all these players. Seems like all of them can knock down three-pointers. 
by my count that's four so far today and mm -hmm. here is Gunderson back out to Noli. Sioux Valley is really having to work hard on offense. They're spending a lot of energy on offense, just getting towards the bucket. Oh, and a nice baseline drive, but it wouldn't go for Lundy. And back the other way comes Lennox off the rebound. Iacker driving between two defenders, and it's a beautiful oh, shot converted by Iacker. And a 10 point lead again for Lennox after they crawled back to within five. And with a timeout on the floor. You're watching the State Boys Class A Basketball Tournament on SDTV Television. Back at the Sioux Falls Arena, some of the Sioux Valley fans trying to see if their team can cut the deficit again. And there's a fast break, and it's going to be too strong Brady by Will. Brady Will. And back the other way comes Lennox, and a spinning drive in the lane, and a foul drawn by Jordan Conda. And Brady Will's going to get tagged for that foul. First team foul against Sioux Valley, and a missed opportunity there for the Cossacks because they had an open layup but could not convert. Yeah, and, the, and just a bad succession of events for Brady Will, missing the layup at one end and then the foul at the other, and mm -hmm. missing the first attempt is Conda. 4.08 to go here in the first half. Lennox leading by 10, looking to extend it here with Conda at the line. And his second shot is knocked down, and so it's an 11 point lead now as Sioux Valley comes back the other way. Miller going to slow it down again. It has not been the type of fast paced attack that Sioux Valley would want, as that pass is off the hands of Miller and out of bounds. It was actually a, a good pass by Will. But Miller just couldn't hang on, Steve. And Lennox had a lot of traffic in there. Right. And you wonder if he lost sight of it with all the arms that were flying around in the paint. That's good team defense by Lennox. No doubt. And they have just frustrated Miller in particular today. There's a little baseline jumper by Blaschen that won't go. Rebound Sioux Valley. Here's a chance coming off that defensive stop to get some points and I think Steve they would like to be able to transition a lot quicker than they have been today and yeah. that has I think cut into what normally is a very strong offensive attack as Miller misses a three point attempt and Iacker at the other end oh. takes a nice feed and scores nice fake by Iacker the defenders went by him and he gets the easy one off the glass and for Iacker he has nine points in this game. And he averages seven and a half. He had 23 yesterday, so that young man has stepped up. And Iacker just a junior. And again, we're seeing this same sight here of Sioux Valley holding the ball around the perimeter, trying to figure out how to penetrate this Lennox defense. Lennox, one of those teams, they don't rebuild, they reload. Noli with a three-point attempt and won't go. Miller battling for the rebound, puts it in. Nice stick-to-itiveness by Ben Miller. Boy, he was just bouncing on those toes and just stayed with it. Mm -hmm. That was a big, big bucket for Sioux Valley. Iacker, little turnaround one-hander by Iacker, won't go, and tied up on the rebound is Cruzy. And yep. it'll be Sioux Valley's ball. Yep. And Cruzy, I think maybe looking for a foul there. Now he'll be replaced by Harms in the lineup, and we have a sub in for Sioux Valley. Looks like Tyler Christensen into the lineup for Sudengay. Well, right now, Bill Vincent's just trying to find a combination of support players for Noli and Miller to try to solve this defensive puzzle that and Lennox has given them some fresh legs maybe too will help out sure well you mentioned all of the energy they've expended just trying to find their way to the hoop Noli underneath battles and scores that's what they need get that man loose along the baseline Brooks Noli on a good pass to set him up because Noli like I said he, he works well around the basket he's very strong and a three-point attempt by Vlashen won't go. 
And they battle for the rebound. We have a foul underneath. Honda was able to get that rebound, feed it to a teammate, and that foul is going to be against Christensen, his first for Sioux Valley. And so going to the line is Austin Harms for Lennox. And the first one is good. Harms had 10 points yesterday, eight in the first game, and two of those points came on a dunk. Right, coming off the bench. And the second shot won't go. Miller with the rebound. Yeah, we haven't seen any dunks by either team today so far, but we're we're only in the first half. 1.30 to go. Lennox that's, leading by 10. That's because Sioux Valley's hung on to the ball for, I'd say, about 80% of this game. Lennox has been very quick on the trigger. When oh, they've nice had pass into Miller, and he is absolutely mugged underneath. And I believe that's Vlashton will pick up his second personal foul. Check out the replay. The nice entry pass. He has position. Vlashton, no doubt about it. Contact all the way around. So Miller with a chance to make two and gets the first. Six points in the game now for Miller. Well, it's been a little better, a little less frustrating for him here in the second quarter after being shut out in the first. And Miller makes, nope, misses the second one. In and out. Mm -hmm. I was thinking we would see a much more up-tempo game going back and forth, Steve. We have not seen that today. I think that's what Lennox wants. There's nothing but air. And oh, they're going to say it's out of bounds that when the Oreo player initially had it along the baseline, he was stepping along the baseline before the Sioux Valley player touched it. So the ball goes to Sioux Valley. That's a break for the Cossacks. Yeah, it looked like Miller might have traveled, but before he had the ball, it was out of bounds. Noli with a jumper. Good. Two point shot. Noli with. Eight points in the game, six in this quarter, and he has stepped up his game. A nice jump shot by the 6'3 junior. Cruzy works it in to Iacker, kicks it back out to the top. Lennox, they're going to hold it for the last shot, and, and they are a team that over the years has run a very patient style of offense. Normally, they're the team that wants to slow it down. Ayaker thought about taking that shot, but they'll wait. They're going to use the double team. That's going to leave somebody open. And you don't want to do that in the final couple of seconds. Now they sink back. Counting down, and the three-pointer is good. With two seconds to go, it is a three-point basket for Brandon Klinger. And it is a nine-point lead for Lennox as we end the first half. Lennox 29, or excuse me, Lennox 28, and Sioux Valley 19. You're watching Class A Boys Basketball Consolation Round Action on SDPV Television. The 2008 South Dakota High School Boys Class A Basketball Tournament is brought to you in part by your membership in the Friends of South Dakota Public Broadcasting, by Wellmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Dakota, and by Dakota Bay. And now let's go to our welcome back to the Sioux Falls Arena. Now let's go to our public address announcer who will introduce our halftime entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, today for your halftime entertainment, we present the Platt Geddes Dance Line. They'll be dancing to a medley of songs in which they will incorporate all of this year's performances. The Platt Geddes Dance Line is coached by Melanie Songaroff. Let's welcome them to the floor, the Platt Geddes Dance Line. This is definitely the wickedest thing I've ever in my life. Like I do it when 
I do it, dog, I do it. Break it down, put your back into it. Man, y'all ain't ready for the shit I'm doing. Get up, get up, put your drinks down. Don't want y'all to stop your drinks out. All over that, your cheap blouse. Ain't nothing but a smaller in the head high. Still, still me, I just change the sound. To the other one, I had to swap it out. Kept something in the background. Cause you know the song, but you ain't know it. Mama working for me, make a play, I wanna spend some money I don't really like spending money, but You do what you do, and you will I'm gonna show off that body you got You got that bad girl so hot You work it at, you took it at, you took it at Like a rock, show off that body you got You got that bad girl so hot You work it at, you took it at, you took it at Like a rock, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead Nothing in them, nothing in them, hunt, hunt, hunt No silicone, no light bulb, no cold tops, no dumb stuff. No. And that's rolled in the day's world when a member brought in this world. Good look, come on. That good, that hot, and that will make an athlete lose his breath and let it be. A couple scores from the other tournaments to pass on to you in the seventh, eighth place game in the Class B tournament up in Aberdeen. Well, some exciting halftime entertainment provided by the Platt Geddes High School Dance Line, Mel Melanie Sangaroff, the director. And we will take a break, come back, and uh, get you set for the second half of today's fifth place game between Lennox and Sioux Valley in Class A boys basketball on SDTV television. 
the 2008 South Dakota High School Boys Class A Basketball Tournament is brought to you in part by your membership in the Friends of South Dakota Public Broadcasting, by Midcontinent Communications, and by Sanford Health. The 2008 South Dakota High School Boys Class A Basketball Tournament is brought to you in part by your membership in the Friends of South Dakota Public Broadcasting, by Midcontinent Communications, and by Sanford Health. And welcome back to the Sioux Falls Arena as we are just minutes away from the start of half number two. And uh, with Lennox leading, you may say that it has to do in part with Jeff Larson, their head coach. They're wearing his lucky orange sweater. <laughs> he said that uh, he has more than one like that. I'm not sure if I believe him. He said this is the one that he wears because he's superstitious about it. And he said it's brought him luck to wear that orange sweater in the past. And so far, so good. Well, I, I've seen Coach Larson many times at tournaments and regular season games over the years. And uh, yeah, it always seems he has uh, that orange sweater on. But make no doubt about it, he's one of the best coaches of the state. Here's our halftime stats. Field goal percentage pretty even. Three-point percentage favoring Lennox. Rebounding pretty even, but four turnovers for the Cossacks. Just one for Lennox and two steals for Lennox. Things pretty even, but uh, Lennox has got that big nine-point lead. And uh, not that they've really needed him, but Jared Vlaschen did not score a point in that first half. We'll see what he does here in the second half as Lennox has the ball to start the second half of play. Lennox has so many weapons. You know, it shows you how good they are. Some, they don't need him at times. There's Vlaschen with a putback, and he missed it off of the uh, three-point attempt by Iacker. And it goes out of bounds. It's going to be Sioux Valley's ball. You know, Vlaschen does get a lot of the headlines, but you know what? This Lennox team is loaded with a lot of good players. And, uh, you know, it's those guys that you don't read about that quite often burn you. Sioux Valley trying to find a little more space, and they do on that drive by Gunderson. Boy, Gunderson's playing a big game today for Sioux Valley. And they're going to need him to step up, get a few more buckets, create a little bit more. And a three-pointer by Klinger, no good. He made two in the first half, but misses that one. And now Gunderson coming back the other way for Sioux Valley. Pulls up, no lead. Oh, nice feed into Miller, and it's good. Nice bucket, nice pass by Noli to set up Miller. Noli's done that a couple times today, those laser-like passes. And look at that, Sioux Valley's cut the lead to five. Five unanswered points to start the second half. Again, they're chasing, Cruzy. chasing Vlashen all over the court with Sudengay in the diamond and one. Vlashen with contact, and a foul will be called on uh, Sudengay. Or, yeah, it will yeah, be. Yeah, it is Sudengay. Yeah, it's only his first foul, though, as Vlashen just kind of launched it toward the bucket with reckless abandon, trying to go for that foul, and I think he might have got bumped under the eye a little bit. He's asking the referee to hold things up for a moment. He has yet to score in this game. He had 29 in the first game, 24 yesterday. If I'd have told you that he that he would not have scored in the first half, there's the first point. But if I had said he'd be shut out in the first half, but Lennox would have a 10-point lead, would you have believed me? Yeah, because Lennox, because just, of the depth. Lennox is that good. They have that much right. depth. You know, I think, I'm not sure if Lashen wears contacts or not. They're checking there's some the moisture. Or the, are they checking for... The, Contacts, maybe, or, or maybe moisture on the court. Either one. Flashing was holding his eye. I don't think he wears contacts, so I, I have seen he that hold shoot up. like he needs them. <laughs> that's for sure. I have seen games held up before because of a missing contact lens. And he sinks the second basket. So Flashing has his first two points of the game on the free throws to extend the lead to seven. Mm -hmm. And it, Sioux Valley back the other way. Boy, and again, Sioux Valley. Working the ball way outside. Most of the time, teams will be passing it around that three-point line, but Cossacks are three, four steps behind it. Three-point attempt, and it's nothing but net for Tucker Lundy. 
I think they're going to give him a two. Oh, only two. I thought he was behind the line, but it's hard to see from here. He was in that far corner, so just a two-pointer to cut the lead to five. Sioux Valley will take it nonetheless. Iacker looking for somebody underneath, and it's going to be a foul. And I think they're going to tag Sudengay for his second personal foul as he is the guy chasing Blaston all over the court. You got uh, four guys playing a zone and one guy chasing. We call it a box and one or diamond and one. Blaston driving to the hoop and no stopping that. Blaston up to four points now. And Gunderson oh. with the three pointer. Boy, he did a good job catching the pass, getting his feet set, shoulders square to the bucket, and fired off the three pointer. So it is just a four point lead and a steal by Gunderson. Now he loses the handle, battling for it. And it's going to be off of Klinger, but do they call a foul? They do. They're going to say that Gunderson fouled Klinger. Still great hustle by Gunderson as he was diving for the ball. Look at there, he forces it, and that's where the foul happens. They say they, that he cut under him and commits the foul there. That's only his first personal foul, but great hustle by Gunderson. Working it down low, and here's Cruzy who gets a call for traveling, going through the lane, and that's a big break for Sioux Valley. They've cut the lead to four, and they have a chance to narrow the gap even further here. And let's see if Lennox turns up some pressure. They have been in man-to-man -man defense all day. Miller had just six points in the first half. Noli on the baseline kicks it back out. Miller's starting to heat up. Noli. Noli's had a good game. He had uh, eight points in the first half mm -hmm. to lead the Cossacks. And they work it down to Noli, and he gets pushed out of bounds. It's a foul that will be called on number 23, Jordan Conda. That'll be his first foul. As you see the entry pass there, the bump out of bounds. We've got a timeout on the court. And we will continue with coverage of the State Boys Class A basketball tournament from Sioux Falls here on SDTV Television. Back at the Sioux Falls Arena and Sioux Valley inbounding the ball down by four. Miller trying to take it to the hoop. Off balance shot won't go and the follow up draws a foul by Lundy or no. Yeah it's going to be on Tucker Lundy. He went over the back. Yeah. That is his first personal foul. Hey we got an update from the B tournament less than a minute to go. Fifth place game Scotland in front of Campbell County 75 61. Well that's a break for Lennox there. Three seconds. Oh. In the lane was Klinger, I believe, and uh, called for the three second violation. So Sioux Valley gets a break. They've got the momentum here in the second half. But they're going to have to be careful with the basketball. Lennox stepping up the pressure. They work it around Sioux and Gay, and it's off the iron and over the backboard. Got a quick update from the double A tournament just underway with their fifth place game Yankton out in front of Roosevelt 15 to four with three minutes left to go in the first period that's out in Rapid City. Cruzy battling and draws the foul. No offensive oh. foul charging the call. Wow. Let's take a look at this again as he takes the pass and drives and boy I don't know. Meanwhile, at the other end, Sudengay to Noli to Miller. They work it around, looking for an opening. They're down by four. Noli was open in the middle. He wanted that pass. Had a look of disappointment on his face when it didn't come in. Sioux Valley was trailing by nine at the half. Three-pointer good for Gunderson. Gunderson is on fire for the Cossacks. And it is a one-point lead. Again, they led by nine at the break, Lennox did. But Sioux Valley has whittled away that deficit. Klinger, Cruzy, Iacker, 
Blastian with the jumper won't go. He is not his usual self today. Miller with a big rebound. And Noli will bring it up for Sioux Valley. Cossacks have all the momentum right now and they're gaining confidence. And it's players like Gunderson that are making a big difference. Down low to Miller. Nice pass off the glass and good. Wow. And Sioux Valley has the lead. And looking for a timeout is Jeff Larson. What a run by Sioux Valley. And they stuck with their game plan. When they were down by nine, they just kept staying with it, slowing it down, working around, finding the open players. And Gunderson was with, with uh, eight points in this period, two three-pointers and a two-point bucket. Miller with four points. And uh, Blaschen's been the only person to score in this period for Lennox with two free throws and one bucket. But Sioux Valley, you know, sometimes you got to stay with it. Let's check out the replay as Miller works in the paint against Klinger. Blaschen tried to go up for the block. Even if he had touched the ball, it would have been goaltending, so he was late getting there. And Miller is finding the openings that he didn't see in, or didn't get to in the mm -hmm. first half. It was denied for most of that first half and all of the first quarter by Lennox. But now things are lighting up. Blaschen with a big basket for Lennox. And Lennox needed that one to break up the momentum that the Cossacks have gained over the last few minutes of play. So just out of the timeout, Lennox takes the lead back. And one, that's a pretty good option to go to when he got Blaschen. Miller floating to the oh. lane. What a shot. Over Blaschen who wanted to swat and didn't get it. And Sioux Valley takes the lead back. It's a seesaw battle now. And the marquee players are starting to light it up. Vlashin spins, puts it up, it won't go. And a rebound comes away with it. Noli does yep, for he, Sioux Valley. He pulled it away from a teammate and from a Lennox player. Noli driving, pulls up and dishes it back out to Miller. Here's Gunderson now. Well, Gunderson has been the difference in this game for the Cossacks. And they're slowing it down. They don't have to hurry. Gunderson, who has had a hot hand today for Sioux Valley, to be sure. Shooting the ball with confidence. You can just see it. Oh, five second call. Five second call. And it, I was just going to say, you can just see that the momentum is with Sioux Valley, and that's a break for Lennox. And here come the Lennox Orioles in the orange uniforms. And they're moving a little slower on offense as a whistle, and we have a foul called against a Sioux Valley player. Sudengay gets his third foul, and Will's going to have to check in to replace him, and Lundy's going to go to the bench replaced by Nathan Kramer for the Cossacks. So Sudengay, he's been an important defensive player because he's the guy chasing Vlaschen all over the court. Meanwhile, Klinger with a long shot won't go. And a foul on the rebound. Noli's going to get tagged for his first personal foul. Final score in from the B. Scotland 77. Campbell County 61. Scotland claims fifth place at the B. Lennox down by a point. Off the inbound. Cruzy for three. Nobody oh, spotted him in the mountain time zone. And he was alone in the corner, just standing there waiting for the inbounds pass. Nobody spotted him, and he had a wide open shot. Two point lead now for Lennox, and uh, we have a foul on Miller. It's uh, Klinger who hacked him. Mm -hmm. And so Sioux Valley now looking to take that lead back as. Klinger comes out of the game and uh, Brewer in for Lennox. And with these two players just off the bench into the game for Sioux Valley, the Cossacks looking for contributions from them, but there's a turnover by Will, one of the players just into the game, and Cruzy finishes off the fast break. That was a nice pass by Harms to set him up, and here comes the pressure from Lennox. Well, it's going to back away now. And a long pass to Miller. He corrals it. 
Now they switch Vlastian over to guarding Miller as Lennox, they play man-to-man oh, -man near Steele. Almost a steal, but Miller comes up with a loose ball as it was a nice play there by Harms to break it up. Suddenly, Sioux Valley finds himself down by four again after taking the lead. Noli looking around. That was the first time that Sioux Valley's had the lead in the whole ball game. Well, let's see if the Cossacks will hold for the final shot. If you do, you figure it's going to be Nole or, or Miller who's going to do it, and they'll probably handle the ball the rest of the way for this period. And not a lot of time left. They're counting it down. Miller's going to do it himself. A one on four. He goes to the hoop and scores. Oh, baby, and then blocks the shot by Lashton's inbound pass was blocked into the basket. What a play. Miller tipped it in. Lashton was inbounding the ball. Here's the drive. One on four. Miller makes it. Now watch Lashton it. tries to inbound it. Miller blocks it, then tips it into the basket. Incredible. Incredible. It is a tie ball game. Oh, baby. As we go to the fourth, you're watching Class A boys basketball on SDPB television. Fourth quarter action, welcome back to the Sioux Falls Arena, the house of thrills. What a play by Miller to end that third quarter, and he starts out with the ball in his hands here. Ben Miller for Sioux Valley made one of the most incredible plays we've ever seen at the state tournament. They'll be talking about that one for years to come. That whole sequence of events, Gunderson kicking it out. Shot won't go. Noli with a big rebound, driving the lane to the basket. He scores. Oh, baby. Nice play by Noli as he got around the defender, and the Cossacks have a two-point lead. They outscored Lennox 20-11 to in that third period of play. And they take the lead here in the fourth with the first basket. Flashton sends it out to Klinger. Three-pointer won't go, but we have a foul called on Sioux Valley. Yep, away from the ball. It was on the rebound, and that's going to be the first foul on Ben Miller. And there you see Bill Vinson, who he was off the bench with everybody else at the end of the third quarter after that incredible. It, that play reminded me of a play a number of years ago at the double A to end the game. There was a rebound. A pass up court was tipped in by the other team into the bucket right down on their end. And that was uh, Roosevelt against Rapid City Stevens a number of years ago at the double-A, and that ended the game. And Jordan Conda at the line makes the first of two, so Sioux Valley's lead down to one. I guess you could call that a four-point play. Yeah, four Essentially point. what it amounts to. And the second shot won't go. Miller with the rebound. So. And in a situation like that, sometimes it's better if you're the team inbounding the ball. Just hold it. Let the period end. Exactly. Well, Vlashin was trying to make something happen. And we're going to have a foul call on Sioux Valley as Sudengay just picks up his fourth personal foul. And he it looked like he got the worst of that contact as he... He's, uh, I think it looked like he got, might have got cut in his inside of his mouth. He did. He's going to go to the bench. Sudengay's coming out of the game and uh, back in for Sioux Valley's Brady Will. And... Yep, and there the officials are going to say, hey, he's going to have to get the uh, the inside of his mouth checked out. Uh oh, and I think Miller also. Well, we got a break in the action here. Let's give you an update from the double A tournament halfway through the second period consolation game. It is Yankton on top of Sioux Falls Roosevelt 23 to 15 and a timeout has been called by Sioux Valley. Well, it looks like Miller has also 
been cut. Yep, so they're going to, they, they can, yep, they're going to have to examine him here quickly and get that taken care of. And that's uh, uh, obviously they need him on the court through the Cossacks. So that way they, that's why they called that timeout. Don't forget, coming up tonight, championship night here at the A tournament. Our coverage begins at 5.30 Central, 4.30 Mountain Time. We'll get you set up for Red Cloud versus Sissadin. That'll be the third place game. And then it's Platt Geddes taking on Madison, the championship tonight on South Dakota Public Broadcasting. Tom Neiman, Craig Maddock, Mike Hendrickson will take you through the action tonight. But boy, I tell you what, we've got a dandy of a game going here for fifth place. It's a beauty. We, we had a feeling it would be. You've got Ben Miller and Brooks Noli and the Cossacks of Sioux Valley who have uh, been very impressive. And for Lennox, you've got a Division I bound player named Jared Vlaschen who has not shown us, I think, his best basketball yet in this game. But I tell you what, what's impressive about the Cossacks is that they were down by a bunch and they didn't fold. They stuck with their game plan. They went to their strengths and they turned it up on defense. And that's why they're only or that's why they're up by a point. They were down by nine at halftime. They lead by one now. Miller is back in the game. He's OK, apparently. Klinger with a long shot won't go and a rebound pulled down by Will. How about that for a guy off the bench? And Noli with the home run ball to Miller, intercepted by Klinger. That was a good play by Klinger. He ran back with his guy and saw that pass coming all the way. Flashing, looking for help, and it's Cruzy underneath. He gets the roll and the lead back for Lennox. That's what makes Lennox so dangerous. They got so many guys that not only can stand outside and knock down the three pointers, but a lot of guys they can post up. And now a long pass to Will. Beautiful pass. Will can't finish. Follows up. It's blocked by Iacker. He's called for the foul. And for Iacker, that's foul number three as Brady Will missed the bunny underneath. What a pass by Miller. Watch this. A long bomb. And Will right there, he lost the handle on it. And I think that's what caused him to miss that shot. And then Iacker coming in and gets called for the foul. So Will will have two shots and a chance to give his team the lead back. First one is good. And we're tied again. I wonder the reason he bobbled it and he was in a hurry. I think he heard footsteps of Mr. Glass <laughs> coming in. Hey, you know what? I wouldn't want to hang around the neighborhood with that guy coming down the alley after me. Second shot won't go. Rebound. That was Conda. A good job of yes. boxing out Miller. Conda's a big guy too. Six, Another 6'5 six, player for Lennox. Lennox says they got a full bench of those guys. Iacker for three. It's good! And it is a three-point lead for Lennox. Just like that, they can strike and Iacker's in double figures with 12. And now Sioux Valley working it around. Plenty dangerous of time pass left. there. Boy, that was dangerous. And they're backing him up to the along to the along the perimeter, and they got guys backed up close to that half court line almost. That was what we saw a lot of in the first half of the Cossacks. They're way outside on the perimeter, passing the ball around. They've got Vlaston guarding Will. They don't see him as much as a threat, so that way Vlaston can come over with some help defense if necessary if somebody gets loose underneath. Noli hanging on to the ball. Now he's going to take it himself. Spins in the lane and scores. Oh, baby. Noli's got a dozen in this game. That was a strong move in the paint. He is really moving well today. And, I, you know, you almost wonder if that, that knee, he missed half the season after having uh, his ACL operated on. Here's Vlaschen with a baseline jumper. Good. That's a two-pointer. And it is a two-point lead, or three-point lead now for Lennox. And back the other way comes Sioux Valley. Gunderson can't make the bunny shot. And Vlaschen with a rebound. And a fast break coming the other way. Now they'll slow it down. Cruzy back out to Iacker for three. Yes! You can't leave him open. Just like that, it's a six-point lead. The pace of the game has picked up. That favors Lennox, and a timeout has been called by Sioux Valley. We'll keep it here as I tell you what, it has been a, a, a tremendous run by Sioux Valley, and now Lennox responding as we'll check out the replay. Watch the pass outside. Iacker left alone. And, and he's that the guy, is 
uh, he, he hits his three or third three pointer of the game and he has 15 points in the contest this, and the second one Steve broke the tie and then that one with some big insurance and of course the basket before that you know who else but uh, Vlashin stepping up big mm -hmm. for the Lennox Orioles and I tell you you know that's you know you can shut down a guy like Vlashin only so long he's got eight points in this half he didn't have any uh, at halftime but of course he's making a lot of contributions rebounding intimidation in the paint that last shot for Sioux Valley a little wild out of control but you know anytime a Sioux Valley player's got it in close like Brady will on that one occasion sure you know they're the, you know he's gonna be there <laughs> you're hearing the footsteps and when you got a 6-5 guy that exactly. can jump out of the building you know they're gonna be able he's able to block a lot of shots and he changes shots and as you look at Brooks Noli there and you see that brace on his knee I was talking about how he missed half the season with that uh, ACL and there's another look at him there and he wasn't moving as well early in the tournament Steve but today there's a lot of fluidity is yeah he's moving a lot better today I noticed that too that he's moving much better not only with the ball but when he doesn't have the ball and here's Noli underneath battling for it and was he tied up or nope they're gonna have a foul against Lennox yeah I thought it may have been a jump ball, but they're going to tag Kondo with his second personal foul. And so it'll be Sioux Valley ball. They're down by six. And we got a timeout on the court. And we will take a break now. With a timeout on the court, you're watching State Boys Class A basketball on STPB television. Back at Sioux Falls Arena, 4.08 to go. Lennox leading by six, but as uh, this game has shown, a six-point lead doesn't mean a whole lot. Anything can happen from here on out, especially with Ben Miller on the court for Sioux Valley and Brooks Noli, who has the basketball, who's had a big game, his best of the tournament so far for the Cossacks. 19 fouls on the Cossacks, just five so far on Lennox. So Lennox has got free throws, double bonus the rest of the way. A lot of, again, Lennox just pressuring every pass. Nice pass underneath, and they score. It's Gunderson off the beautiful feed from Ben Miller. 13 points for Gunderson. Boy, number 12 is doing it all for Sioux Valley today. And it is a four-point lead. Blaschen out to Iacker, being guarded closely by Noli. So they'll work it around again. They're trying to post up Cruzy against Sudengay with four fouls. Klinger trying to get it down to Cruzy and almost knocked away by Sudengay, but he's at, at height disadvantage. And driving is Iacker, and he, or excuse me, uh, Blaschen. He's fouled by... Brooks Noli. Yeah, Noli reached in there, and if he had just held his ground, watch watch the drive by Blaschen. Look at there. He reaches in there. If he had Ooh. just stepped up and gone uh, straight up, I think he could have drawn the charge. <laughs> Look at Blaschen selling that foul, too. Well, he, and that, it's not that he really needed to, but he just made sure he got the free throws. And he makes the first one. They're in the one and one with nine team fouls on Sioux Valley. And uh, Vlashin, who is headed to Division I Drake next year, he is a senior, and he'll be playing for Drake next season. And he's been one of the, you know, top uh, prospects in the state. He'll be playing for Keno Davis, who has his team in the NCAA tournament, a top 25 team. That ought to be exciting for Mr. Vlashin. But before that happens, there's more excitement left here in the state tournament in South Dakota. He makes both free throws to give his team a six-point lead. Here's Noli taking the pass down low and gets fouled by Iacker, number 25. And if that is on Iacker, no, they're going to catch, I think, uh, oh, like Austin Harms. All right, Harms coming across, got it. That, that adds a little more meaning to hoop and the harms. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Noli misses the first free throw. And Noli's first attempt uh, at the charity strike today. He's an 86% shooter on the season. Probably not too happy with himself missing that first one. But he's got another attempt. And he misses them both. Boy, that, that hurts. Yeah, that hurts Sioux Valley. But they had a chance to get a couple of points without any time ticking off the clock and, and cut now. the lead to four. Now, here's Vlaschen 
spinning and he looks like he caught Miller in the eye as he was swinging those elbows and he draws the foul. Hard aggressive move to the basket and he'll get two free throws. Check out the replay watching the drive. Nice spin move. And uh, Miller, yeah Miller went up and collects a second personal. Two great players bumping up against each other. And Lashin makes the first foul shot. Well, you wonder what college is going to get Ben Miller. And I, I think if he puts some more meat on his frame, that young man is going to be well sought after as he gets the rebound there off the second foul shot missed by Vlaschen. It is a seven point lead. So Sioux Valley really has to get something going here. And who else but Ben Miller going to the hoop? Won't go. Rebound Vlaschen. And a fast break. And now Lennox will slow it down. Iacker takes the pass. Cruzy now. They work it around. Vlaschen sees a man open for a fleeting second, but it's knocked away. Iacker. I, I think it went off of Iacker. It did. It went off of Iacker's mm -hmm. hands. He, sh he was wringing his uh, his right hand. <laughs> Vlaschen with those hard passes. Well, a key trip down the court here for Sioux Valley under two minutes to go and they're down by seven. Every possession has to result in points from here on out for Sioux Valley. Ben Miller. Taking on everybody and driving to the hoop. He is not afraid and he has cut the lead to five. 18 points for Miller. But now let's see if they'll have to foul if Lennox is going to just play catch around the perimeter. They are a well disciplined team and Larson's like uh, coach Larson is going to yell out instructions and that's going to be a foul on Lundy. Yeah he pushed him from behind and that was not what they wanted in that situation. You do get to a point where you want to foul the other team but I don't think that was what Sioux Valley's intention was there but. It's not a bad foul for Lundy. That's only a second. It is the 10th team foul, so it is the double bonus here for Lennox. And the first shot rattles in by Klinger. Lennox has a team 66% on the season from the free throw line. And the second shot won't go. Miller with a rebound. So it is a six point lead. Oh, and the pass underneath knocked away nicely by Harms. Good defensive play for Lennox. And now here's Noli. Jumper won't go. Rebound by Cruzy. That's a big defensive board for Lennox. And then fouled by Sudengay with a minute to go. And Sudengay is just fouled out of the game. Update and from the double A tournament quickly at halftime fifth place game Yankton on top of Roosevelt 29 21. Nate Sudengay just a junior so he'll be back next year. Except a hug from the coaches. He had a tough assignment in this game chasing Vlaston all over the court but he played a solid game today just scored two points but gave him Good defense. I'll be able to tell his grandkids about that one. As the first shot is put in by Cruzy. And the second one is good as well. So it is an eight point lead. And Lennox feeling a little better about themselves right now with a timeout with 102 to go. Remember this game was tied at 39 at the end of the third period of play, but it has been Lennox who has asserted themselves here in the fourth period of plays. You see Coach Bill Vincent call up the play. Let's listen in. We got Tucker rolling out. Ben puts it on the floor. They're coming with their one three one. Okay. Otherwise, down at this end, we're going to get a quick deuce. All right. We're running fist into our eagle. Something to the rim to see if we can. They want to take it to the rim. They're not looking for the three-pointer, if I interpreted that correctly. They want to get the deuce because they figure Lennox will probably be standing out on the three-point line guarding against that shot. Take it to the rim. Try to get the deuce. Try to get that two-point shot because chances are Lennox will maybe surrender that one relatively easy. Well, whatever they do, they're going to have to do it quickly with just a minute to go. And Lennox is going to make him work the ball up the court by applying a little bit of pressure. And that's not what Sioux Valley 
needs to play into right now. They need to get something going in a hurry. Miller will get the shot off and it won't go. Flashing with a big rebound and Miller, I think, was trying to foul him. Now they foul Cruzy. And so he'll go to the line with uh, 39 seconds to go and uh, an eight point lead for Lennox. It wasn't a bad look at the bucket for Miller. He did slip away from his defender. He tried the three. It just wouldn't go in. And now Cruzy, a 67 percent shooter at the line for two. And now coming out of the game for Sioux Valley, Brooks Noli and Brady Will. and. Noli, who's also a junior, who had a fabulous game today as he takes a seat on the bench. And Sioux Valley, I think uh, they're going to bring their guys out. They're sending a lot of guys ben to the Miller is table. coming to the bench. What a play he made today yep. at, at that four point play to end the third quarter and tie it up. Flashing out of the game for Lennox as Coach Jeff Larson going to his bench to send in the reserves as well. The Miller. Uh, Miller's coming back next year. Mm -hmm. uh, you see him in the middle of there on the bench and he's consoling some of his teammates. Sioux Valley, I think, has a lot to look forward to oh, next season with absolutely. Brooks, and, uh, with, uh, Brooks Noli and Ben mm -hmm. Miller back. You get the role players like Suden Gay and Christensen in. They're back next year for Sioux Valley. Kramer will be back. Brady Will's going to be back. And we'll see uh, more of the players coming out of the lineup. Cruz made Orioles. that first foul shot. He's coming out. And he had a fabulous game. He's a senior, so he is done, but uh, he will go out with a consolation championship. Now, Cruzy with 16 points, and there's a near steal. We're going to have a foul. No, over and back is going to be the call. I should correct myself. A fifth place finish, which is uh, the best you can do when you go into the consolation bracket. So, and Lennox, you, again, a team that lost on a last second shot, you really have to wonder with all the talent wearing orange on this floor just how far they may have gotten had it not been for the amazing last second shot by Madison. Well Lennox is always a favorite to get into the championship bracket and into the title game because they're good every year it seems. Well they have some talent to replace for sure. Now as I said earlier they're a team they don't rebuild they reload. And off the bench. The shot by Mike Ellefson won't go and now Ellefson trying to get the ball back and it knocked to the floor so he'll get to go to the foul line as he was uh, put down pretty hard by Tanner Thompson Mode who's in the game for Sioux Valley and Ellefson the senior he got a bucket here the other night and now he's got two free throw opportunities here with just the 1.7 seconds left. So he has a chance to get on the scoreboard he doesn't do it that time. But he's got one more shot and uh, checking in for Sioux Valley is Ryan Narvison. He's a senior and uh, coming out of the game is Nathan Kramer who is just a, a sophomore so he'll be back. And Narvison gets to make an appearance and the shot won't go and uh, that will do it. But what an entertaining fifth place game. Lennox ends up winning it by 10. But the game, I know it's a cliche, but it is as true as ever when you say today that the game was a lot closer than the score would indicate. We will take a break, come back, and uh, have a whole lot more for you. Here it's Class A Boys Basketball State Tournament action on South Dakota Public Broadcasting. The 2008 South Dakota High School Boys Class A Basketball Tournament is brought to you in part by your membership in the Friends of South Dakota Public Broadcasting, by Midcontinent Communications, and by Sanford Health. The 2008 South Dakota High School Boys Class A Basketball Tournament is brought to you in part by your membership in the Friends of South Dakota Public Broadcasting, by Wellmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Dakota, and by Dakota Bank. And welcome back to the Sioux Falls Arena where we have just seen the fifth place game here at the state boys class A basketball tournament along with Steve Toom. I'm Paul Guggenheimer and what a game this was as we look at the stats and uh, 
you see that uh, pretty pretty even in the field goal percentage Lennox did knock down those three pointers today and uh, Sioux Valley with a few more turnovers that proved costly and Lennox outscores Sioux Valley 19 to 9 in that final period and Lennox was able to salt it away at the free throw line we'll take a break you're watching boys class A basketball on SDPB television the 2008 South Dakota High School Boys Class A Basketball Tournament is brought to you in part by your membership in the Friends of South Dakota Public Broadcasting, by Wellmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Dakota, and by Dakota Bank. Welcome back to the Sioux Falls Arena. It has been uh, a lot of fun watching these uh, consolation round games here this afternoon as uh, Lennox comes away with the fifth place championship. And Steve Toom, it's been a pleasure working with you here. Thank you so much. You've been a lot of fun, my friend. And don't forget, 5.30 tonight, our coverage begins Central Time, 4.30 Mountain Time Championship Night. Sisseton takes on Red Cloud, then Platt Geddes versus Madison for the title. For Steve Toom, for Brad Van Osdell and Bob Bussey and all the folks working so hard behind the scenes, I'm Paul Guggenheimer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tonight at 5.30.